Clemson has had a lot of great players come through their program, including Deshaun Watson, Sammy Watkins, Trevor Lawrence, and CJ Spiller. But no recruit has had as much hype surrounding him than Daquan Bowers did. Scouts from Rivals.com considered him to be the closest thing to legendary pass rushers Reggie White and Bruce Smith in the past decade. And like Reggie White, faith and religion played a big part in his life. There were very high expectations for Bowers who had all the pressure in the world, and Bowers lived up to those expectations in college, but a few mishaps and injuries along his football journey made his professional career last only a few short years. In today's video, we'll talk about Clemson's all-time biggest recruit, Daquan Bowers, and how he went from being in line to be the next great pass rusher to come out of college to failing out of the NFL in only four short years. If you guys like college football and sports content, then this is the channel for you. With college football and the NFL season soon approaching, I'll be uploading a lot more often, especially since I'll be moving to my new place in the coming week, so expect a lot more content in the future. Before we get started, I appreciate all the support, guys. I'm trying to reach my goal of 1,000 subscribers by October, so if you can please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so we can get this video into the algorithm. Share this with your friends. Comment down below in the comment section on who or what topic I should cover next, and make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss another upload. And without more interruptions, Let's talk about Daquan Bowers. Bowers' football journey began in a small South Carolina town of Bamberg, which has a population of less than 4,000 people. And his father, Dennis, was a gospel singer and guitarist who had greatly impacted his life. In high school, Bowers was a three-sport athlete playing football and competing in both indoor and outdoor track. He competed in the shot put like you can imagine, and he was really great at that. But however, football was his true calling, as he was a star from day one. Daquan, Daquan played on both sides of the ball as a running back and the DN. In his senior year, he led his high school team to an 11-2 record, and listen to this. Bowers recorded 97 tackles, 33 tackles for loss, and 14 sacks on defense. While being a running back on offense, he rushed for over a thousand yards and scored 19 touchdowns and caught another two touchdowns out the backfield. And he was also a returner on the kickoff game and averaged 40 yards per return. And he even blocked seven kicks. So it's safe to say he did it all for his team. Well, a stat line like that is easy to see why he was so highly regarded in the first place. And this was the season that Daquan really rose up the recruiting ranks to solidify himself as the best in his class. Bowers was ranked the number one overall prospect by ESPN.com, Rivals.com, and 24-7 Sports in 2008. This was the first recruit in Clemson history to be ranked as the number one player in the nation by any recruiting service. On signing day, Bowers chose the Clemson Tigers over the likes of Florida State, Georgia, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Penn State, and South Carolina. Bowers arguably started a trend that is completely normalized in today's college football landscape as Bowers graduated from high school early to get a head start at Clemson, even though he really didn't need it. Bowers was an impact player right away recording a game-high seven tackles in the 2008 spring game. And as a true freshman, Bowers finished the year with 47 tackles, which was first among Tigers defensive linemen, and with eight of those being for a loss. He also added one sack and had 15 QB hurries and flashed a lot of potential early on. As for the team's success, the Tigers were kind of shaky that season. They finished their year with a 7-6 record, where longtime head coach Tommy Ballard resigned, and in came assistant wide receiver coach Dabo Sweeney, who, who obviously, like we all know today, was able to turn the program completely around to where it was in the late 2000s, early 2010s, and turn them into a national powerhouse. Next season under Dabo Sweeney in his first full season as the head coach, he was able to turn everything around and finish the year with 9 wins. Bowers had 46 tackles, 10, 10 and a half for a loss, and 3 sacks, despite being injured early on in the season and having to miss 3 games. He improved on all stats across the board. During the offseason, his father, who meant the world to him, tragically passed away, and this obviously crushed Bowers deeply. He and his dad were in a gospel band together called the Singing Stars, and in tribute to his dad, he played the guitar right next to his casket. And outside of the tribute that Bauer, that Daquan did during his funeral, Bowers also decided to go on the field and dedicate his junior season to his dad. And boy, Bowers did just that. Bowers' 2011 season was, an eight, was a historically great season, and what she was an absolute stud for the Clemson defense and finally brought some luster back to his name that hasn't been there really since high school. 
Bowers recorded a total of 67 tackles with 26 for loss and 15 and a half sacks. He led the nation in sacks and was tied for the most tackles for loss. And obviously this was a big season for Daquan and he received tons of accolades including being named first team all ACC and was recognized as a unanimous first team all American. He also won the ACC Defensive Player of the Year award and was the winner of the Bronco Nagurski trophy. It's safe to say Daquan not only did a fitting tribute to his dad, and he showed his potential to NFL scouts in what I think is the most important year for any college football player their junior year in college. This was just a season he needed to leave early from Clemson and become the number one overall pick in the NFL draft. Media outlets like NFL.com and ESPN were all raving about Bowers during the draft process, mentioning Bowers as being such a franchise changing player, he was good enough to be the number one overall pick in the draft. Bowers was all but ready to prove himself as the number one overall pick, but the death of him and the reason why this never happened is because of injury. After his historic last season at Clemson, he ended up having to get season ending knee surgery that was found out by the league scouts, and this is, what, and this is obviously what made him drop so far in a very talented draft. Bowers didn't have to wait too long where he was drafted in day two of the draft and he fell just to the second round to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, being the 51st pick overall and obviously this was obviously disappointing for Bowers as he was a, a guy who many thought was going to be a first round pick coming out of high school so in his first season in Tampa Bay he played in all 16 regular season games and he started in just six accounting for 25 combined tackles not quite the season the Bucks were hoping for out of Bowers, as well as the entire team's performance. The Bucks that year went 4-12 after finishing last season 10-6 and, and were among the league's worst defenses, allowing the 30th the most yards in the league. So this definitely played a part into why Daquan's numbers weren't as hot out the gates, because if your defense is always on the field, that just gives the, the opposing team more opportunities to score. And not to mention their quarterback, Josh Freeman. Remember that guy, Josh Freeman? He threw for a career high 22 interceptions, making it that much harder for the defense to come out and do their job. Head coach Raheem Morris was obviously let go after the season, and things really didn't get any better for Bowers. On the second year, DN tore his Achilles tendon. Uh, it took him a while to recover from this injury, and he was finally activated off the pup list in October and playing his first game of the season on that same day against the Minnesota Vikings. He finished his second season in the league playing in 10 games but only amassing 13 tackles, so you can definitely, like I mentioned before, you can definitely tell that this injury had an impact on his overall game. But then things got even worse for Bowers. He was taking a flight to Raleigh, North Carolina out of New York City, and when he was at the check-in counter, there was a loaded 40 caliber gun found in his carry-on bin. The charges were reduced and Bowers pleaded guilty to disorderly conduct. He paid a $370 fine and his court record was sealed, and he ended up not doing any jail time, luckily for him. Tampa Bay wasn't all that worried it seemed, as you know, Bowers was like a borderline player and you know, his play had definitely decreased from his from his uh, first year, so they were on the fence about him at that moment. And coming into that season, Bowers played very sparingly in 2013, and by the summer of 2014, there were some serious doubts as to whether Bowers would even make the Buccaneers roster. And after his run with the law and his uneventful 2013 season, Bowers got himself into more trouble being suspended for two games using performance-enhancing substances. In my opinion, I feel like most athletes use PEDs or some sort of uh, performance enhancer to, you know, whether, whether it help with their recovery or whether it help with them strength train, what have you. Then there's mo a multitude of reasons as why athletes use it, but I think it's more common than people like to let on. That offseason, Bowers became a free agent uh, as his production just wasn't up to what the Buccaneers uh, were expecting, but he was ultimately re-signed by the team before the start of training camp. And unfortunately, Bowers was again released by the Buccaneers in September of 2015, and he was later re-signed by the team again in December of 2015. But following that season, the Buccaneers decided not to re-sign Bowers, and his time in Tampa was over. While he was in Tampa, he was marred by a multitude of injuries and a bunch of off-the-field issues as well as his overall production on the field that led to his un unimpressive four years in Tampa. 
Bowers in four seasons played in playing a total of 53 games starting in only 10 of them, contributing 69 tackles and 7 quarterback sacks. And after his Buccaneers stint, Bowers would never play in the NFL again. And after he was released from the NFL, it seemed like Bowers took some time to, you know, just get his head straight and possibly continue to train and bear himself for his next NFL opportunity. But instead of going to the NFL, Bowers signed with the Edmonton Eskimos of the Canadian Football League where Bowers played pretty well uh, in 14 games for the Eskimos in 2017. He contributed 17 defensive tackles, 7 sacks, and 1 interception. In early March of 2018, Bowers and the Eskimos agreed to a 2-year contract extension, but the thing is, he would never finish that contract, and ultimately decided to retire in 2018. After retiring from the game, he didn't officially leave football behind. In the 2018 college football season, he joined the Clemson coaching staff as a GA, defensive line, and to finish his degree at Clemson. He left, he left Clemson and is now the D-line coach at South Florida, and was hired by a former Clemson coach who coached Bowers during his time on campus. All in all, I think Bowers was a beast in high school and didn't really start to show why he was so highly regarded coming out of high school until his junior year in college. But that season ending injury that he suffered prior to the NFL draft was really his downfall at, uh, as he never reached the success that he had during his final season in college and things really kind of went downhill after that injury. Now he's coaching FBS football which seems to be his future. Hopefully Bowers can rise through the ranks of the college coaching world and eventually achieve his goals of whether that be to be a defensive coordinator or to be a head man at a big time power five program. We'll just have to wait and see what the future holds, but but Daquan all around seems like a very nice guy, seems very humble, seems very faith driven, seems like he has a great head on his shoulders, so seems like he knows what he wants out of life, and I just hope the best for him in the future. This is really just a story of perseverance and how to overcome tough times in one's life and still keep pushing when things don't go their way. Well, I hope you guys liked this video. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and smash that notification bell. And hit me down below in the comment section to suggest who or what I should cover next. We are trying to, we're trying to reach our goal of 1,000 subs, so any support is appreciated. And until next time, one.